All right, guys, first thing we are going to go through is we are going to go over the guided practice section for 11.1. .1. So you can go through and check your answers and see if they compare. If you've made a mistake, now's the time to go back and fix your answer. If you're not sure why you made the mistake or what you were doing wrong, make sure you let me know or make Mr. Jablonski know. All right, so step one, find the total number of students who had a preference. We have six for the left, and we have 18 for the right, so a total of 24. Next thing we need to do is set up a proportion to find our percent. So if there are six out of 24 students, how many would that be out of 100? Remember, percent is out of 100. So if we do, um, <clears throat> excuse me, if we multiply across, you'll end up getting X is 25. Also, cross multiplying would work well here. Um, and then 25 out of 100 is 25%. So you should have 25% chosen on the left hand. Number two. Okay. There are 20,000 members. The percent of members having each, each membership type is shown in the circle graph. How many members have a contributor membership? What percent of the non-contributory memberships are individual memberships? Round to the nearest percent. So remember, percent of a number. If, um, let's see, they have the percent of members having a membership type is shown in the circle graph. How many have contributor memberships? Well, contributor is right here, 7.5%. So you have to change that to a decimal, which is 0 .075, and multiply it by 20,000. That will give you 1,500 members. Next thing you need to do is what percent of non-contributory memberships are individual memberships? So individual right here, non-contributory is going to end up being 65%. Essential question. When solving proportions based on data from graphs, why do you often convert the fractions and percents to decimals? We do this to simplify our calculations. Otherwise, it could be a lot more uh, confusing, a lot more numbers going along, a lot more symbols. We don't want that. We want it to get easier, not more difficult. Okay. So next, if you need to pause the video, go ahead. We're going to look at section 11.2. Alright guys, section 11.2 is where we are comparing two dot plots. Alright, it says compare the shapes of the dot plots. Class A are dots or clustered around two separate areas. Class B, just clustered in this one area. Compare our centers. Well, the center of A is right about nine miles because it's right in between those two chunks. Center B is about six miles. You come right here. If we look at it, that's really about the center of our data. Next up, compare the spreads of the dot plots. Okay, so on A, let me slide this back down a little bit. On A, we go all the way from 4 miles up to 14 miles, and we have a big wide gap right here in the middle where there are no dots. There's no data there. B is spread only from 3 miles to 9 miles, so not a very big spread for, prop, um, for graph B. 4, calculate the medians for both. So, oh, how nice. If we actually sit here and cross them off, okay, so we go here, here, just like you would if you had your numbers in a nice long list. We're going to compare every number here in order. We end up right there at 6 on B. If you do the same thing for A, let's see here. We'll go one here, one here, one here, one here. So you're just going to literally cross off each dot just as you have whenever we have a full set of data. And once again, we end up at 6. Nice and convenient for that one. Number 5, calculate our ranges. Okay, well we've already got our spreads right here, so you should be able to use those numbers. If we do 14 minus 4 for range A, we're going to get 10 miles. Range B, all we have to do is 9 minus 3, and we're going to end up getting 6 miles. Last but not least, your essential question check-in. 
What do the medians and ranges of two dot plots tell you about the data? First of all, your medians are going to allow you to compare your centers. The ranges are going to allow you to compare your spreads. How far is your data spread out? So, hopefully this helped you by checking over your answers and making sure you're on the right track. You do have a quiz today, so make sure you are prepared and ready. Y'all have a great weekend if I don't see you. And at some point, I will hopefully get this to work. Now.